Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser and we are modeling for Advantage. Today we're going to have a look at the Space Wolves Combat Patrol for 9th edition in reference to the new Space Wolves Codex. I'm afraid it's just me today because Britain's still in a lockdown, a second wave, so it's going to be a while before I've got a co-host. So you'll have to make do with my sausage fingers. <laughs> Get this fella open then, because uh, I'm a pro, I didn't have a knife. I have got the Space Wolf Codex on the side here, which we will have a look at some of the stats of the units. So according to this, we get 17 miniatures in here. As you can probably see from the box cover, we're going to get exactly these 17 miniatures, which is 10 intercessors, 5 reavers, an Invincta tactical warsuit, and Haldor Ice Pelt, who's in amongst there somewhere. He's the... Space Wolf Battle Leader. And that is in fact exactly what it tells us on the back. So this is £85 retailing in the UK. I just did a, a quick bit of mental maths, or I say mental maths, I did it on a piece of paper. If you were to buy these separately, it would cost you, including the upgrade sprues and so forth, £125.50. So there's nearly a 50% saving on this, which is pretty decent. And as I understand it, this is a genuine combat patrol at 500 points. I'm interested to know if there's any kind of literature in here that helps you get started in the game, because I think the thing about this box is it's very much aimed at beginners. So, let's start. Combat Patrol Space Wolf Booklet. These are literally just assembly instructions, as you have seen before. They're the same format that they do these days, with the different color sections showing you the different options, the yellow bits where you put the glue. They're nice, I like these new color print instructions. I don't think there's anything special or new in here. No, no, pretty much the same. So let's take a look at the sprues. We get ourselves a pack of bases, hopefully the requisite number. Not seeing the big base in there. These are the new 32mm bases, obviously. One Haldor Ice Pelt sprue. Two Primaris Upgrade sprues. These look like the bits for the Invincta Tactical Warsuit. We're going to have a look at these and their stats in a little bit more detail. One Reaver sprue. And two Intercessor Sprues. Plus a Haldor Ice Bolt Belt, I assume. The Battle Leader. Dreadnought belt, belt, uh, Base, not Pelt. And the Ubiquitous Space Wolf's Decal Sheet. So there is nothing remarkable about this box. It's good value for a beginner. Straight off the bat, what I would say for um, as existing Space Wolf players is we've probably already got most of this stuff. In fact, this is extremely similar to the previous um, uh, start collecting Primaris Space Wolves. You've got 10 intercessors in that and you've got three aggressors as well as this uh, battle leader. This time it's expanded the box a little bit, but it's added Reavers. I mean, for goodness sake, Reavers are junk, right? They do have new rules in the codex. So, if we take a look at the intercessors, we'll put those in first. One, two. I'll have a look at the codex and see if we have anything new in here at all on the troops for intercessors. I don't think we do, though. No, we do not appear to have anything other than Grey Hunters and Blood Claws in here. So we are just running on the same intercessor sprue, uh, intercessor stats as we get in the Space Marine Codex. Um, so in terms of making your intercessors looking a bit more space wolfy using these upgrade sprues, uh, I can show you a couple of my models over here that I have done previously. Um, they're not all that space wolfy, so we'll get some stills of these. But this one has used a combination of pieces, but I've got a. Uh, Primaris upgrade sprue, the sculpted shoulder pads. If you like the sculpted shoulder pads, then you're gonna like this kit. 
I've gone for the sculpted shoulder pads. The problem I have with that is once you've gone down that path, you're really committed to it. You, you can't mix in some with decals and some with, with molded shoulder pads, which is a shame because some of the models, they're not gonna take those, I'm afraid. Um, getting another 10 intercessors is potentially interesting. Um, unfortunately, not because of this upgrade sprue. We've had access to chainsaws on sergeants for quite a long time. What you really need to be doing with those is getting some thunder hammers or some power fists or so, so forth, like the one I showed you. In fact, if I was building my intercessors again, I'd do what I've done with this model here, which is he hasn't got any arms. I have just put a few bits of space wolf paraphernalia on him, such as you get on that sprue, and he is going to take whatever equipment he needs so that I can just build the rifles and magnetize them separately. Anyway, that's your intercessors. Not very exciting. Next up, the Reaver sprue. These may be the worst of the Primaris units, I think, but in this book, we've got a new unit. I'm sure you've heard about it, the Hounds of Morkai. So let's see if I can find them. So here we go, Hounds of Morkai, new Reaver unit. And essentially, you can buy this as a kit separately for about 25 quid, and it is just five Reavers and one of these sprues. Um, Hounds of Morkai, they are basic Reavers with the pistol and combat knife option. Their stats are unremarkable, but they have some slightly different rules. They also have fixed equipment. You can only take the pistol and combat knife. You can't take the carbine. Um, you also can't take the deep strike fins. I forget what they're called. So their abilities, um, they have the Angel of Death, just like everybody else. They have Hunters Beyond Death. Models in this unit ignore the lookout, so rule if the target is a Psyker. In addition, each time a model in this unit makes an attack against an enemy Psyker, add one to that hit roll and one to the damage roll. Now, these pistols are AP-2 doing one damage, so potentially you could snipe Psykers, certainly Imperial Guard Wizards, um, or perhaps uh, certain Chaos Demons and so forth, you can take some shots at them, hitting on twos, AP-2, and doing two damage a shot. So it's, no, it's not a joke, but it's not a reason to take them, I think. Leaning into the anti-psychic rule a little bit more, this unit can only be selected as the target of an enemy psychic power if it is the closest model to the manifesting psychic power. In addition, each time this unit would lose a wound in the psychic phase, roll a d6 and a 4-up, that wound is not lost. So they effectively get a 4-up, feel no pain against psychic powers. Interesting, but I don't know anybody would be going out of their way to target Reavers, to be honest, with magic. They're not particularly dangerous units. Morkai's Howl. The real reason to take this unit. While an enemy Psyker unit is within 18 inches of this unit, subtract one from Psychic Tests. While that Psyker is within 6 inches of this unit, subtract an additional minus one from Psychic Tests. Minus two to Psychic Test is going to prevent a great deal of magic. Now, they're not cheap, they're 22 points a model, 110 points or 5 power level for the unit, but I think against a lot of armies, minus one and an 18 inch bubble it is huge, that's 36 inches across, plus the width of the unit. It's gonna be a most of the table, except maybe their back line. So, interesting. Um, if Reavers have been overlooked in the past, and that's really because they lack AP on their many, many attacks, I think there are now reasons to think about taking them. That one unit um, deployed somewhere in the center of the table is gonna provide a huge amount of sort of psychic debuff, and I like that. Uh, the Primaris Upgrade Sprues we've talked about. So there's so little on here um, to be excited about. Uh, you've got the chainsaw, you've got the guy drawing a knife. You do get Terminator and Aggressor shoulder pads, size shoulder pads, as well as the regular ones. But a couple of, wool, a couple of um, tassels and a couple of charms. If you compare this to the uh, blood claws or something. These guys are really unremarkable. And you've also got two bear heads on here, is it two? Yeah, and one helmeted one with a gem in the middle. I mean, my space wolves don't wear helmets and I can't have the entire Primaris force in my army with the same two haircuts, but that seems to be the way to go. Haldor Ice Pelt then, the Primaris battle leader we've seen before. He's a nice model, I've got to say. Um, 
he comes with this axe, is in quite a dynamic pose. I've actually mounted him on uh, Age of Sigmar base, just because I've got the um, kind of ruin type basis for most of my guys, sculpted bases. So let's have a look at his stats and see if he's changed. He comes in the kit um, with the carbine and the axe, which I suppose under the new rules you could use as a frost axe. Well, having scoured this book, there is in fact no special entry for the Wolfguard Battle Leader, so I guess he's just using the standard profile of the Primaris Lieutenant. Last up then, the Invicta Tactical Warsuit. So, uh, I don't have an Invicta Tactical Warsuit. I have a couple of Redemptors. This is the multi-part Redemptor rather than the easy build one. And I just immediately upon looking at this kit, I'm kind of sighing a little bit because this has got like a hundred pieces on it. I'm seeing a number 115 there. I know that they're nice kits and so forth, but the 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 I, I want wargaming kits. I don't want model making kits. I do not need all of this complexity. And the comparison between the Easy Build Redemptor and the multi-part Redemptor exemplifies the fact that they're perfectly capable of making a model that's very nice without needing to do this. I know some people get a lot of enjoyment out of this in the kit bash, but I really, really don't. This is gonna take me hours to put together, almost certainly gonna to lead to some kind of mistakes, and it's not a particularly cheap kit. That said, you do get the multiple weapon options. It is cool. I mean, it's a, it's a vehicle that a lot of people are in two minds about, uh, whether they feel it fits or whatever. And it did have its day in the sun at the end of the last edition. What I would say about this in the current edition though, is it isn't a dreadnought. And dreadnoughts have just got so much better. I think the, the uh, golden age of the Invicta Tactical Warsuit is in the previous edition. Now dreadnoughts having that minus one damage resistance and them being core units, unlike the Warsuit, makes them so much more flexible and powerful. I'm not saying there's no role for this, because I believe it still has that advanced deployment. Not quite as useful perhaps as it would have been. I do like the fact that there's a little bit of lagging on the kind of protective roll cage that he has, because um, you know, clearly that little bit of lagging is gonna make all the difference if you fall off the vehicle. Well, that was my look at the Combat Patrol. I think it is fantastic value, I've got to say. Um, if you're an existing Space Wolves player, you probably don't need any of the models, my money. And if you're serious about your uh, competitive gaming, you probably bought a load of these war suits last time. And you got the previous box set, you've already got this unique character. And you've certainly already got intercessors, they just keep giving them to us. But if you're a starter, fantastic. This will get you out of the gate. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoy our content, like the video, maybe leave us a comment. Thank you.